So let's talk about Nautilus for a second. This song is amazing. Um, it's one of the most sampled songs in hip hop. Creed said that it sounded like a submarine, right? So that's mm -hmm. why it's called Nautilus. Now I want to list for my audience because I have a very hip hop centric audience, just some of the songs that Nautilus comes from, you know, and um, I'm sorry if you don't get paid from a lot of this, but <laughs> that's a whole other subject. <laughs> there's a lot of them. Um, there's Beast to the Rhyme by Run DMC. Daytona 500 by Ghostface Killer. Children's Story, Slick Rick. anti nigger Machine, Public Enemy. Uh, Brothers on My Jock by EPMD. Let the Rhythm Hit Him, uh, Eric B. and Rakim. Live from the Barbecue, Main Source. Throw Your Guns in the Air by Onyx. Cruddy Click by Naughty by Nature. Clap Your Hands by Tribe Called Quest. Uh, Mind Spray by J. Rue the Damager. Uh, some Will Come Out by Pete Rock. That's just some of them. I have a whole list uh, that I could keep going. You have Idris Muhammad on the drums. He's from New Orleans, so there's a theme there. Um, um, tell me about making that record. Yeah, maybe it isn't uh, just a coincidence that Idris was also from New Orleans and my mother was from there. Yeah, and, I don't and, know. You, and you got a record called Mardi Gras. It's like, there's a whole thing going on. Idris played in a way that was like a New Orleans street beat, no matter what tune. I would bring him a tune and he played the same. Mm -hmm. Same street beat. Couldn't resist it. There, there, there was in the cracks of you couldn't write it out. You couldn't talk about it. But mm -hmm. he would just start playing and it would feel good. Mm -hmm. So I have great respect and deep memories of having the opportunity to have him be a big part of my records, especially when he was sitting next to Gary King, who was playing bass mm -hmm. with it equally deep, deep, deep groove, and the two of them uh, made me feel like all I had to do was just float and do a little, a few little licks over the top of it, and we had some magic grooves going on. Uh, Nautilus was, I can truthfully say, almost a throwaway. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a bunch of other songs that I had concentrated on that I had auditioned for Creed Taylor, and we had a concept of the way we wanted the album to go, mm -hmm. but we didn't quite have enough material. Mm -hmm. And I can still pretty clearly remember the session going across the Tappan Zee Bridge mm -hmm. to New Jersey and taking 9W Highway down to Inglewood Cliffs where uh, Rudy Van Gelder's studio was. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have um, a chart. I didn't have anything specific planned for that day. Mm -hmm. So I did have this little bass line in my head that I wanted Gary King to play, and I knew that, that he would hook me up by turning my little lick into magic just by the way he played the bass, and mm -hmm. he could make it work. So um, we played this piece that didn't have a title, you know, song number 10 or whatever it was, mm -hmm. right. and uh, I liked it. Uh, and I was kind of indulging myself in my memory that Creed Taylor gave me a budget mm -hmm. to overdub um, sometimes large string orchestra, production, mm -hmm. woodwinds, different kind of things. And every song that I didn't have a clear idea about, I felt like I, I could dress it up a little bit by adding some strings to it, something right. like that. And, strings are amazing. And they do change the, the character. <laughs> yeah. And in this particular case, I used the fact that we had an extra tune to put a fancy string arrangement on it with the idea of maybe I might get a movie score date out of it or I might wow. get a, another gig That's out of it. That's so cinematic. And so, and, uh, uh, Nautilus, the biggest feel is a groove, the Idris Muhammad's feel, mm -hmm. but it also has a kind of mystery about it that I think attracted the hip-hop producers mm -hmm. because it was cinematic yeah. yes and it was both funky groove and, and this is only me trying to analyze it way after the fact that after i found out that all these people sampled it right. why you know I, I'm, right. kept, I'm still asking that question but right. i think those elements of the the first the groove idris and gary and we're establishing this Pretty simple, repetitive kind of groove, mm -hmm. easy to chop up, or whatever. <laughs> right. whatever. And then right. over the top of that was some strings, and I believe it might have been an ARP Odyssey sound that Creed heard that made it sound like a submarine. Right. Uh, uh, and all of that was a throwaway tune that 
we didn't think we'd get any airplay, mm -hmm. and we didn't mm -hmm. uh, because the Feel Like Making Love my instrumental version mm -hmm. got all the airplay Beautiful for the record. most part, and that's the part the DJs paid mm -hmm. attention to. And Nautilus was hidden, side B, the last mm -hmm. cut. To me, it was just I had fun doing it, but I didn't think anybody would pay that much attention to it. In hip-hop, we have a saying that goes, the B-side wins again. Really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's sure true that's with public me. Public enemy, right? Yeah. B side wins again that was because very it's true, always Mike. the B side that the people gravitate towards. Yeah. The A side is what the label wants you to put out, mm -hmm. but the B side wins again. Stuck in it, call me young, go get it. Now you can't fuck with it, my slow go away. What's the world?